Yo, what is good everybody? It's your boy Tej and in this video I'm gonna be showing y'all how to make some wavy ambient beats for Drake and maybe some other R&B artists like Bryson Tiller. Pretty sure I made the entire beat from scratch so I'm gonna be showing y'all my entire process of making the sample and adding drums to it. If you're new to the channel and you like these types of videos be sure to hit subscribe. As always I'll have the finished beat played at the end of the video so be sure to stick around for that and with all that out of the way let's just hop right into the beat. Before I hop into how I made the melodies, I'm going to show you all a quick preview of the entire sample. So for my first melody sound, I got this activated synth key preset from this analog lab bank. With that sound, I went into the MIDI and I put these chords in. I just started by putting these basses notes in here and then just kind of building notes around it. Overall, I didn't really think too much about like music theory progressions. I was just kind of adding notes and seeing what sounded good to me. And for effects, I just put an Ozone Imager 2 on it. I just did this to stereoize it a little bit, as you can see here. Next, I went back to the same analog lab bank and I got this Got Heat sound. I believe it's like a pad or another key sound. And I just copied that same chord MIDI over from the previous pattern. And that's just kind of like a subtle like undertone just to add a little bit of depth to the previous chords that we had. And then I opened up a third analog lab and I got this run it preset. I believe this is a key preset from that same astral bank that I've been using for the last couple patterns. So the pattern sounds something like this. So how I ended up making that is I just took the same chords that I had from the first and second pattern. I pitched them up by an octave and then I hit Alt A on my keyboard. And then I went to the arpeggiator here and I went to this drop down box and selected 13-2. And then I put the range to two and then I hit Alt Y on my keyboard to reverse the MIDI. And then that's how I ended up getting that same MIDI pattern. I didn't actually like draw in all the notes or anything. I routed that to a mixer track and I put some RC20 on it with this Lush and Crunch Guitar 2 preset. I turned off the noise and turned down the distortion and I think everything else was relatively the same. And then after that, I threw on some default halftime. And when I exported that out as an audio clip, I put it into the playlist and reversed it. And this way the notes still correspond with the same chords because when we hit Alt Y, we reverse the MIDI. Now that we're reversing it again, it makes the same notes correspond, but it kind of gives this like reverse rising effect. So playing that in context with everything else. And then I added in a bass pattern and it's just two different bass one shots. So the first one being this longer sub bass sound. And then the second one being this more pluck sounding bass. And I just layered those on top of each other with the same MIDI and just kind of let them play out. And then lastly, I just added like a couple final touches here. The first thing that I added was this vocal loop I had in a different beat. I believe these are like arcade vocals and I just threw some reverb and like an EQ on them or something, but I can't find the original FLP that has it, but they sound something like this. And then I added this perk loop from like a free cymatics kit. And so putting everything together, we have our finished sample. I just exported each of the sounds as audio clips and then I took all those stems and arranged them to make the loop. So once I had done that, I'd opened up the WAV file in a new FLP. I arranged the melody and added the drums and then from there I just finished the beat. So the first sound that I put in was this clap. I just put in a standard clap pattern.
And on top of that, I added this snare sound. And for the most part, this layers with that clap that I showed you on the previous pattern and then just adds like a couple little accent notes here and there. And then lastly, just to fill in the gap for the last clap, I just put in the snap here. And then after that, I put in this hi-hat pattern right here. I wanted to keep somewhat of a focus on having a lot of variation in the velocities in the hi-hats. And this is just to add some more bounce to the drums. And I didn't want to make it too overcrowded with just like hi-hats like I would for like a normal trap beat or something like that. I wanted to keep it kind of bouncy and leave it a little bit open just because we already had a lot of different sounds melodically with our sample. And I believe this is one of my personal hi-hat midis. I might've used it in a tutorial before. Next, I added this open hat sound, and I added a whole bunch of them. Honestly, I couldn't give you a reason why. I just kind of started placing stuff wherever, and I liked the way that it sounded, so I just kind of ran with it. And here's a quick tip. If you want to use this for different drum sounds, one shots, or whatever it may be, if you want to preserve the length of the note, no matter how you pitch it, you go to the time stretching here and just select stretch. That way, you don't have to worry about the high notes being shorter than the lower notes and vice versa. And then next I added this kick. I just kind of placed them as I went and just kind of ran with whatever I thought sounded good. And again, similar to the hi-hats, playing around with the velocities a little bit will definitely add some vibe to your drums. And then lastly, I put in my 808 pattern. Overall, it's a pretty basic 808 pattern, nothing too crazy in terms of rolls or anything like that. It's just adding some notes. And also the 808s don't hit exactly where all the kicks do and vice versa. I made some of the kicks and 808s kind of counter each other. That definitely gives a lot of bounce to the drums. And one final tip for getting really good drum bounce for, for beats like this is when you're arranging your drums and they're all like consolidated in one pattern, what you want to do is you go to this knob right here, the main swing, and just turn it up somewhere between 5 and like 15%. I've noticed works the best. So that's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you're able to take something away from it and find it helpful. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more like this, be sure to hit subscribe. Let me know any thoughts or recommendations in the comments below. And that's all I got for this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace. Why don't you run with his tail?